So welcome to the next discussion, our next lesson, which is going to cover the specific notification pattern. And this pattern is particularly important because it helps to eliminate some of the problems with Java built-in monitor objects that we've discussed up to this point. So here's the context for the, pat the pattern. Imagine that we have a family of threads in Java that need to cooperate by synchronizing access to shared resources in a specific way, in a first in, first out order, perhaps a last in, first out order, some prioritized order, and so on and so forth. For example, if you think about the Palantiri simulator app we've been using as our running example for the assignments in, the, in our class, then we might, or in fact we do, uh, in some cases want to be able to have FIFO access to the semaphores. So in other words, threads that have been waiting the longest are the ones to get the next semaphore. The problem is if we use Java built-in monitor objects, or for that matter, if we use Java built-in condition objects by themselves, they don't really provide control over the order in which threads will access a resource like a Palantir in the case of our Palantir simulator app. This is what's referred to as haphazard notification. And when you take a look at the specific notification pattern description, you'll see that one of the things that they talk about as the problem is haphazard notification, which just means you as the programmer have no control over which thread goes next. So this basically arises in two ways. This problem arises first, you have no control over the selection of which thread or threads will run after notify or notify all. And you also have no control over the scheduling of the threads that run after notify or notify all. So again, from your point of view, everything occurs haphazardly. From the job execution environment's view, they may have good reasons for doing what they're doing, but you as the programmer have no control over that. So what are we going to do to solve this problem? We're going to apply a pattern called the specific notification pattern. And if you take a look at the link at the bottom of the page, you can get the PDF for this paper, which was published a long time ago, but it's still relevant. And you should read through the whole thing, but you should pay particular attention to listing three, which is most relevant to our particular use case. So what this pattern does is provides a non haphazard mechanism for selecting and scheduling the next thread to run. In particular, it allows the programmer to designate exactly which thread in a family of threads should proceed next after a call to notify or notify all. So here's a real quick overview of the solution. Then we're gonna dive into the solution in more detail. So basically the way this works is we're gonna have threads that will go to sleep by calling wait on monitor objects. That'll be for the undergrad version of assignment 3B, by the way. The grad student version uses a rantret lock and a condition object to get the same effect. One monitor object will be used for each thread that must be individually notified. So whenever threads go to sleep, for example, in our, in our uh, case of the Palantiri simulator app, whenever a being thread will go and try to acquire this spare semaphore, then they, each thread will go to sleep on a monitor object. One waiting thread will then be notified in a specific order. In our case, it's going to be in in FIFO order, uh, could be other orders, but we're gonna do it in FIFO order. And that will indicate that the thread that's been waiting the longest is the one that gets to run next. So that's a quick summary of the specific notification pattern. We're now gonna turn our attention to visualizing and understanding more nuances in how the pattern works and how we can apply it to implement a fair semaphore.